right. So, um, cofactor of f, okay, this matrix is equal to all kinds of things, but in this position it has uh, essentially the determinant of this little matrix F22, F23, F32, F33, okay? You, can't, you finish it up, all right? Okay, so what we see then is that the derivative of the determinant of f with respect to f gives you this quantity, the cofactor of f, okay? But it turns out that the cofactor of f is also involved in the calculation of a different function of f, in particular in calculating its inverse, okay? So we also use f inverse is 1 over determinant of f cofactor of f transposed, okay? That's the closed form formula for f inverse, okay? So what we see now using these two uh, resu results, what we see is that the derivative of the determinant of f with respect to f is the determinant of f itself, a scalar, multiplying f inverse transpose, okay? So remember where this all came from. All of this came from the fact that we were saying that, look, we need, to, we need to calculate the following quantity. J dot is derivative of this determinant function because J is in fact determinant of F, right? Derivative of this with respect to F contracted with uh, F dot. That was our application of the chain rule. What we've just done is found out a, is, 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 is to come up with a better way to write um, the first term in this contraction, right, in this tensor contraction. And what we've found is that it is determinant of F itself, which is J, F inverse transpose contracted with F dot, okay? Coordinate notation, F inverse transpose, remember, F inverse, right? Um, F inverse transpose is simply the transpose of F inverse, right? So we have F inverse here. I'm going to write its indices here as capital I, little i, okay? And this has to be multiplied by F dot, which has indices little i, um, capital I. Okay? All right? Now, this thing, of course, I, I, can, I can move those terms around wherever I like, so I can write this as F dot, uh, I, I, F inverse, capital I, little i. Okay? right? But this you observe is actually J times the trace of F dot F inverse, okay? All right? Because you, you, you really look at the previous term here as if that very last little i were a little j and then you're taking the trace, okay? So, what does all of this give us? Um, it, um, okay, 
also, and here's another result. Whenever you're computing the trace of some matrix, it's the same as forming the scalar, the, the tensor contraction of this quantity. You take that tensor, which in our case is F dot F inverse, and contract it with the second order isotropic tensor. Okay? And you can write that further in terms of the Kronecker delta if you like. There are any number of ways to write it. Okay? Put it all together. So, what do we have? We have derivative of rho zero with respect to time equals, I'm going to suppress the writing of arguments here, okay? Uh, the first term that we got was um, this. We had the material time derivative of the spatial mass density. Little v there is a spatial velocity tensor. This multiplied j. And the next term was uh, involved because we had to calculate j dot. We just did that successfully. And what we are ended, what we end up with is j. Uh, I'm going to write it as trace of f dot f inverse. But what is f dot f inverse? It is just our spatial velocity gradient tensor. Okay. So we have j, j trace of nabla v. Okay. And all of this, of course, was multiplied by rho. Right, from our product rule, okay? Now, what does happen with partial time derivative of rho zero? We observe that, of course, this was zero. Okay? Which tells us that we are very safe in doing that. That's permitted because we know that j being the determinant of f is not zero itself. Right? So, we're okay. so it's okay to cancel that out, okay? Since j, which is determinant of f, cannot be zero, okay? So, in canceling it out, we are, we are not changing the meaning of that equation, okay? So, our balance of mass written in terms of purely spatial quantities, is this. Okay, we have partial time derivative of rho, and this is a proper partial time derivative where we are only differentiating with respect to t. We have our convective term. Uh, let me make this explicitly a function of little x and t dotted with the spatial velocity, which is a function of little x and t, okay, plus rho function of little x and t. Um, okay, trace of this quantity, which is also a function of little x and t, equals zero. Okay? Now, the trace of the gradient of V has another form. Well, it's the same thing, but can be written differently. Recall. Gradient of V. The gradient of V has the following form, right? Derivative of little v i little xj ei tensor ej. Okay? So, trace of grad v, sorry, trace of nabla v is partial of vi with respect to xi. What is this? divergence of V, right? Okay? All right. So, 
we have partial of rho. I'm, now I'm going to suppress the arguments. Partial of rho with respect to time plus nabla rho dotted with v plus uh, rho divergence of v equals 0. This is the conservation of mass or the balance of mass written in the current configuration. which is the description you need if the current configuration is all you have in life, okay? So it is that this equation we have at the bottom of the slide is the conservation of mass or the balance of mass in fluids, okay? Observe that everything is in terms of spatial objects, okay? So it's consistent to be used with an, an Eulerian description of motion. So. Fluids, right? So we have partial of rho with respect to time plus nabla rho dotted with v plus rho del dot v equals zero. The condition of incompressibility in fluids is one in which this is equal to zero for incompressible fluids. Okay? All right, so then the first two terms are all you have for the conservation of mass with incompressible fluids. Okay? Uh, the other thing to note is you can combine the last two terms, right? If you, if you don't have an incompressible fluid, you have a compressible fluid, so that last term does not drop out. You can combine those last two terms to write it as partial of rho with respect to time plus. Um, that last term is essentially, those last two terms can be combined into the divergence of rho v. Okay? All right? You, you, can, you can just write that out in, in coordinate notation to see why that works out, okay? So, check with coordinate notation, okay? This particular form of the equation is um, often called the conservation form. It may seem a slightly circular way to describe it because it is the conservation of mass, but it turns out that when we have any other quantity, if rho were not the density, it was just some other quantity, and we could write it out in this form, this form would be called the conservation form. It has implications of looking at rho v as a flux and so forth, okay? So this form of equations is often called the conservation form. The last thing I should also mention is that sometimes in fluid mechanics, uh, what we've called the balance of mass or the conservation of mass is also called the continuity equation because it essentially says that your, 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 your um, spatial density is continuous, okay? Uh, so, balance of mass also called the continuity Continuity equation in fluids. Okay, we're going to stop here.